Azure Virtual Network is a fundamental building block for your private networks in Azure. It enables you many types of Azure resources, internet and on-premise networks to securely communicate with each other. In this video, we will be looking at Azure Virtual Network and we will be covering topics like virtual network concepts, its best practices, after that communication, then network traffic and finally virtual network integration for Azure services. In the end, I will also share details about our free masterclass which will not only help you to learn basics but it will also give you an idea of the learning part to follow as if you are preparing for Azure Solution Architect certification. We have taken a clip from one of our certification training program on Azure Solution Architect and in this clip, our instructor will talk about Azure Virtual Network. Now let's hear from our expert on the same. Thank you all for joining. So we will start with our first module, which is implement virtual networking. So this includes a virtual network and a virtual network pairing. So these are the concepts that we are going to learn today. So basically people will think that they have to first learn virtual machine, but the first thing you should think about isn't a virtual machine, it's a network. So when you are thinking from an architecture's perspective, uh, the first thing that we have to think about is the network layout, not how the virtual machine. So finally, when you have the networking architecture done, you just have to place the virtual machine. It will automatically go to that subnet, uh, create a NIC or the network interface card and get it connected. So that's the reason why we go with networking first. Virtual networks uh, and uh, also, all, it's also known as VNets are used in Azure to provide private connectivity between Azure virtual machines and other services. VMs and services that are part of the same virtual network can access one another. By default, service outside the virtual network cannot connect the services within the virtual network. However, you can configure the network to allow access to an external service, including your on-premise servers. So we will uh, review uh, how virtual networking is done how to choose between virtual network peering and VPN gateway and a comparison when to choose what. Then we will talk about virtual network peering and finally we will have a demonstration on how to create a VNet peering and how to delete or modify that. So let's start with uh, virtual networking. So like I said, uh, it, is, uh, it is used to provide private connectivity between Azure virtual machines and other services. So network addresses and subnets are not trivial to change once you have set up. If you plan to connect your private company resources uh, to Azure services, you will have to consider the topology before putting any VMs into the place. That's the reason why we are taking the Azure, I mean the networking session at the first place. Azure Virtual Network is a fundamental building block of your private network in Azure. VNet enables many types of Azure resources such as uh, virtual machines to securely communicate with each other, the internet and on-premise network. VNet is similar to the traditional network that you had operate in your own data center, but brings additional benefits of Azure infrastructure such, such as uh, uh, scalability, availability. So uh, some of the concepts that are related to VNet uh, are address space. So when creating a VNet, you must specify a custom IP address space using public and private, that's RFC 1918. That's, that's a set of, uh, consider those as a set of uh, laws. If you're already already working as a network administrator or, uh, or a system administrator, you might know what is RFC 1918. So Azure assigns resources in a virtual network, uh, a private address from the address space that you assign. For example, if you deploy a VM in a VNet with address space uh, 10.0.0.0, slash 16, the VM will be assigned a private IP address like 10.0.0.4. Next concept is subnet. Subnets enable you to segment the virtual network into one or more subnetworks and allocate a portion of the virtual network space to each subnet. You can deploy Azure resources in a specific subnet. Uh, just like in a traditional network, subnet allows you to segment your VNet address space into segments that are appropriate for your organization's internal network. This also improves the address allocation efficiency. You can secure resources within subnets using network security group. Regions, uh, VNets is scoped to a single region or location. However, multiple virtual networks 
from different regions can be connected together using a global uh, VNet peering. Subscription, uh, VNet is scoped to a subscription. You can implement multiple virtual networks uh, within each subscription and Azure region. And now Azure op offers a cross subscription uh, VNet peering that, you that means you can uh, peer with the subscription uh, one subscription to another, VNet from one subscription to another, VNet another subscription. Going forward, uh, we will talk about the best practices. As you build your network in Azure, it is important to keep in mind the following universal design principles. So ensure that non-overlapping address spaces. So basically what happens is as a beginner, every time you create a virtual network, what happens is the default address space Azure will show as a 10.0.0.0 slash eight or 16. So people tend to use that. There, there, you can have overlapping. That means I can have VNet1 with the same space and VNet2 with the same space. But if I try to connect them, let's go for a peering or something, the spaces are overlapping. So always ensure that uh, it is not overlapping so that you can have a peering or something done later. Otherwise, you may have to you know, delete everything and recreate it. Perfect. So make sure that your VNet address space or the CIDR block does not overlap with your organization's other network ranges. Secondly, uh, your subnet should not cover the entire address space of the VNet. Plan ahead, reserve some address space for your future use. It is recommended to use a fewer, few, fewer large VNets than multiple small VNets. This will prevent management overhead. Like Let's say you are creating slash 24 VNets and you have to create a lot of them to accommodate all your host. So rather you can go for a slash 8 or slash 16 and do subnetting so that in case you want to change something at the VNet level, you just have to change the slash 16, not a large number of slash 24s. Uh, finally, secure your VNets by assigning network security groups um, to the subnets. Great. So uh, we will talk about several scenarios, uh, some like communicating with the internet between Azure resources, with on-premise resources, etc. And there is another slide in the, in the that is a continuation of this. So first we will talk about communicate with the internet. So all resources in a VNet can communicate outbound to the internet by default. You can communicate inbound to a resource by assigning a public IP address or a public load balancer. You can use public IP or public load balancer to manage your outbound connection. So that's how you communicate with the internet. Next, we will talk about communicate between Azure resources. Azure resources communicate securely with each other in one of the following ways so through a virtual network. You can deploy VMs, several other types of Azure resources to a virtual network such as Azure App Service Environments or uh, Azure Kubernetes Service, which is AKS, and uh, Virtual Machine Scale Sets, also known as VMSs. So this is uh, how the services can talk to each other. Then uh, you can do the same thing via a, a virtual network service endpoint. So you can extend your virtual network private address space, the identity of your virtual network to Azure service resources such as storage accounts, SQL databases, or a direct connection. Service endpoints allow you to uh, secure your critical Azure services only to a virtual network. Next one is uh, through VNet peering. You can connect virtual networks to each other, uh, that enabling resources in either virtual network to communicate with each other. So this is done over a virtual network peering. Azure uh, virtual networks you can connect can be in the same uh, or different Azure regions. Finally, coming to on-premise, how to connect to on-premise resources. Uh, we have a point, to, a point to site, also written as P2S VPN. So it is established between a virtual network and a single computer in your network. Each computer they want to establish connectivity with the virtual network must configure its connection. Uh, this connection type is great if you are just uh, getting started with Azure or for developers because it requires little or no changes to your existing network topology. 
Uh, the communication between computer and a virtual network is uh, sent through an encrypted tunnel over the internet. Side-to-side -side VPN established between your on-premise VPN device and an Azure VPN gateway that is deployed in a virtual network. This connection enables any on-premise resource that you authorize to access a virtual network. The communication between your on-premise VPN device and Azure VPN gateway is sent through an encrypted tunnel over the internet. Finally, we have the express route. Uh, it is established between your network and Azure through an express route partner. This connection is pri private and very fast. Uh, traffic does not go over the internet. So uh, in the next slide, we have, uh, this is the final part of the review and we will talk about how to filter network traffic. So you can filter network traffic between subnets using uh, security groups or uh, NVAs or also called network virtual appliances. To talk about security groups, uh, network security groups and application security groups can contain multiple inbound and outbound security rules that enable you to filter traffic to and from resources by source, uh, destination IP address, uh, port, and protocol. Talk about NVA. NVA is nothing but a VM that performs a network function such as firewall, uh, WAN optimization, or other network function. How you can route the network traffic? So Azure routes traffic between subnets, connected virtual networks, on-premise networks, and internet by default. You can implement either one of the below uh, to override the default routes that Azure creates. First one is a route table. You can create a custom route table uh, with routes that control where the traffic is routed for each subnet. This is pretty much similar to that the route table that we have seen in our uh, operating system, like Linux operating system or Windows, so you have a route table, right? So basically you can write uh, what is the next hop or if the so wherever it is, if it is coming from this computer, you have to route it to this one. What, what would be the next hop and all those things you can uh, manually configure. Next one is a uh, BGP routes. So if you connect to a virtual machine uh, to your on-premise network using Azure VPN gateway or express route connection, uh, you can propagate your on-premises BGP routes to virtual networks. Uh, finally, we have a virtual network integration for Azure services. Integrating Azure services to an Azure virtual network enable pri enables private access to the service from virtual machines or computer resources in the virtual network. You can integrate Azure services in your virtual network with the following options. First one is deploying dedicated instance of the service into a VNet. The services can be privately accessed within the virtual network and from on-premise network as well. Secondly, uh, we can use private link. This is a, a new feature to access your privately, um, access privately a specific instance of the service from your virtual network and from your on-premise network. You can also access service using public endpoints by extending your virtual network to a service through service endpoints. Service endpoints allow you to allow you to uh, service resources to be secured to a virtual network. That was a clip on Azure Virtual Network. Now we have put down everything about the certification, including basic concept. That one should know everything like design, authentication, and authorization solutions, design a governance solution, design a compute solution, design a non-relational data storage solution, all the way design a data storage solution for relational data, design a solution to log and monitor Azure resources, design a network infrastructure solutions, design a business continuity solutions, design a migrate solution along with tips and resources to clearing the certification exam. We have dedicated team working for CV preparation and most important on job support. If you are interested, I would like to invite you for 45 to 90 minute free class with our certified expert trainer, which will not only help you to learn basics, but it will also give you an idea of the learning part to follow. This interactive session will help you to gaining an understanding of why and who should learn Azure Cloud, Azure Certification Roadmap for Architects, your paths to earning the Azure Solution Architect Expert Certification, difference between AZ-303, 304 and 305, demo on deploying Azure Container Instance and more other topics. 
You can register for this free class by visiting k21academy.com slash az30502. Let me show you a quick demonstration how you can do the same. Go to any browser and type k21academy.com slash az30502 and hit enter. After landing on free class page, just click on register now. Fill out your details like your name, your email address, your mobile number. After that, click on register now. It will redirect you to thank you page where you will get all the necessary information about this free class. So guys, at last, if you found this video helpful, please give a thumbs up. If you have any doubts or queries, you can put them down in comment section. Our team will get back to you. Till then, take care.